Hey, I just want to congratulate TJ and Iowa State on a tough uh, conference game win. Obviously, tried to explain to the guys this week on our perspective that um, you're going to get their best shot. Or they're one and three in the league. They got a road game next. They can't start one and five, um, so they weren't going to lose today. The only from our perspective, we had to come in here and win the game, um, and we didn't do that. And so, give Iowa State a lot of credit. Um, obviously, turnovers was a big, big problem for us um, in both halves. And so, we spent half time trying to make that adjustment. Just didn't get it done. Basically, had ten turnovers in both twenty-minute games. To me, that was kind of the game, uh, the story of the game from our perspective. Um, recognizing them, though, um, obviously had a couple special games. Freshman point guard, six, seven, eight assists from where I was sitting and um, controlled the game in a lot of ways. And then obviously they had a great shooting night by 22, and six threes. So it's a player's game in the Big 12. And uh, they had a couple guys really step up today. Uh, and then we always recognize the crowd here, one of the great uh, college basketball venues. We've enjoyed competing here over the years. And I wish we would have played better, but give Iowa State a lot of credit. Um, you know, they won the game today. Congratulations to TJ and their players. Question for Marcus Carr, please. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, Marcus, uh, what about the turnovers, especially in the first half? A lot of uncharacteristic uh, mis mistakes by y'all, it seems like. Uh, yeah, kind of like Coach said, you know, that was it's always our, a part of our game plan and not turn the ball over. And, you know, me being the point guard, um, it definitely falls a lot on my shoulders. I have to be the one to, you know, calm us down and, and make sure that we're playing poised. And, you know, I didn't do a good job of that tonight. Marcus, obviously, Gabe is a guy you're familiar with. When he's playing well like that, what's what's the key for him when he gets hot like that? Um, to just keep shooting his shots. Um, you know, he's obviously a senior. He's been playing this game uh, for quite some time now. And, you know, he knows where his spots are and everything like that. So. He's put the time in in his life. I didn't. I, I seen him work for three years, so I know what kind of guy he is. He just has to trust himself. Uh, about ten minutes left. You were making a really noticeable effort to to attack the rim, try to attack things, and, and for a while there, it was working. What was there any moment? Uh, I don't know where you thought the, the door was open, or maybe the door was closed. I don't know. I don't know. That was supposed to be, you know, our game plan that we talked about coming in was, you know, being aggressive. They have an aggressive defense, so you can't be tentative on the offensive end. You have to, you know, kind of attack aggressiveness with aggressiveness. And, you know, throughout that stretch, I just wanted to, you know, make another push. I, I wanted, I didn't want to lose this game at all. And, you know, I wanted to kind of inspire my team, my teammates, and, and show them that this is what we needed to do. So, um, just try to get that done. Marcus, how, how do you feel about? The way you played at Oklahoma State and then back up again and then kind of off today. I mean, how is this team? Where's y'all's consistency right now? Um, obviously, throughout the past three games, hasn't been you know super consistent. That's something that we're we're trying to do, and we know you know at this point what we're what we're doing and you know the mistakes that we're making. We just have to go back, hit the hit the drawing board, and, and get better. Same thing. I mean, the, it, the turnovers, they were very uncharacteristic kind in terms of, t you know, bad passes, lazy passes. I don't know what word you want to use, but just things that y'all don't normally do. I think those are fair questions to all of us. You know, I'm the coach of the team. Um, our teams have always valued the ball. I think we're one of the best teams in the country with fewest turnovers per game. Uh, the great fans here at Iowa State, they've seen some of our teams come in here and you know, play championship type games with five, six turnovers. That's our objective. Um, today is just one of those games. Um, I think fair question to the players too. You know, I, I don't know how this college basketball deal works. I really don't like to sit up here and talk about anything other than myself, really. You know, uh, but I think those are fair questions to the players too. But we got we got to work on it. And um, you know, a couple things. Nine of them come from our forwards. You know, like uh, we, we can't have that. You know, Dylan, CB, Trey. They, their job is not to turn the ball over. Their job is to score the ball. Or make make the play. So those are you know every once in a while you're going to get a special guard that has a high turnover game. But you know you're playing against one of the best defenses in college basketball. But to have nine on our front line that's frustrating. Um, yeah, it's it's the story of the game. You know it wasn't just the ten turnovers in the first half. It was the 18 points that they scored off of them. Um, you know just from a toughness standpoint. You know we put a couple guys in their second half that played their asses off, Tristan and Avery, and that's that's Texas basketball. That's who we're supposed to be. So. Um, equally disappointing in the turnovers throughout the game was where's the fight to go back and block a shot 
tip the ball from behind. You know, maybe even a hard foul sometimes is the right basketball play after a turnover. But um, it was frustrating watching our turnovers just basically become their offense. We shoot 50% in the first half, 40 from three. We don't get enough shots because we're handing the ball to the other team. So that's a problem. And, um, you know, I'm the head coach here, so I, it's on me. Coach, you're talking about TJ earlier. Excuse me. Um, he's got a team now that's won 14, 13, 14 games, whatever it is, with six players who didn't even know each other in June, coming in, taking over a team that won two games. What can you just talk about a little bit, you know, going a little bit more about how the, the job that, that he's done and been able to do? Yeah, I think that's college basketball in 2021 22. Uh, we've got a team where nine guys haven't played together. So um, I think the team, two teams are similar in a lot of ways. Uh, TJ inherited some guys. Two guys are playing big roles. We inherited some guys. A couple guys are playing big roles. Um, he got, what, six transfers. We got six or seven. Um, he's got a special freshman out there. Um, and we've got a freshman. You know, Devin's a really good player. Didn't play his best today, but we think Devin's going to be good. So two similar kind of bo roster builds. Um, you know, I, a lot of respect for TJ. I've known him for a while. Uh, we're not every day, you know, text message and vacation friends. I don't think I got a Christmas card for him, but I do have a lot of respect for him and his journey. Um, I know this job is important to him, and he's pouring his heart and soul into it. It's very obvious. Um, I, I didn't pick him last in the league, I tell you that. Uh, that This deal's got too much DNA in it here with this home court, uh, this this pride and tradition. And, you know, recognize Coach Pro and what he did before. It, it's not just that there's two of Steve's players left. I mean, there's some Steve culture here, too. Coach Pro, as you guys know, is one of the best coaches in college basketball. This business, things can get away from you. Uh, but I predict he'll be back being a head coach sooner or later and doing what all you guys saw him do for a long time here. So TJ benefited from Steve, too, just in my opinion. What, what about the consistency issue of, you know, to play at O State and then to play so well and then the way y'all did today? I mean, how, how are you feeling about where, you, where your team should be playing or where you expect them to be playing? Again, I think fair questions for our players. I, I'd like to get the whole roster up here and let you spend some time with them. I, from my point of view, like, that's what I'm striving for. Consistency is my number one thing on my Christmas list. You know, health for my daughters, consistency and you know, don't tell them. Sometimes, you know, consistency is up there. Uh, that's not true. My, the health of my daughters is the most important thing. You know, don't somebody don't spin that off. But the consistency, that, that's coaching. And, um, you know, with the young guys, you try to kind of teach them. But the older guys, you expect it, you know. like, And it's, um, again, 20 turnovers. Uh, but give Iowa State credit. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and be one of those guys that you probably, you guys recognize the coach that gets up here and talks about the officiating and, and uh, and his team. I mean, look, the other team wants to win too. This was a one in three team that backs are against the wall, and they got a, what, a road game coming up. And uh, you know they they weren't losing today. So from our point of view, we have to come win the game. Like we were going to have to play our best forty minutes of the season to win at Iowa State, and we did not do that. Give them credit too. I think yeah, it's no different than any other coach. You know, I, you uh, you just want you want guys to play the best uh, they can, and um, you know you can absorb some off nights, bad possessions. But you know, I mean, who played great for Texas tonight? I, yeah, it's a player's game. Who played great for Iowa State? Twenty-two had a great night shooting the ball. Freshman point guard controlled the game. They get some really nice contributions. Uh, with a kid from uh, Kansas, good player, man. Uh, working that baseline, had a kind of a quiet, sneaky game, right? Hit a three tonight. Uh, and, I, you know, they had some great individual performances. That's what this league's about, you know. Like, uh, and then ultimately, when you get to that tournament and you're going to start winning games in that deal, you're going to have to have four or five guys have great games. And tonight, I didn't see any great individual performances. Uh, um, you know, the defense deal is a part of it, too. You look at a stat sheet, well, he had 15 and 8. Well, what about on the other end, you know? Like, you know, and uh, – you know, some of our players that were filling up the stat sheet offensively tonight, they were just giving it back on the other end. So you got to play on both ends, um, in my opinion. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks.